Welcome to Link G4X Training Part 24. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at working with our knock control. Now, our knock control is going to be utilizing a knock sensor that we're going to wire into our G4X system, as long as your G4X system is equipped with a knock control board onto it. So if we're dealing with the lower tier G4X lineup, something like an Atom, it doesn't have knock control, but if we're working with an Extreme or a Fury Box, it will have that knock control circuit built into it. So we're able to bring a knock sensor signal into our Link G4X and then we can process that signal and determine if the engine is knocking. We can take this a step further and actually have the link start to take reactions against a knock event. So we can either pull timing, we can add fuel, or a combination of adding fuel and pulling timing to try to reduce the cylinder pressure and cool the cylinder down when we have that knock condition to make it go away. So it's gonna be a way that we can uh, have a long-term fail-safe within our ECU so that if we have knock conditions, it can take action and start to detune the knock conditions so the engine doesn't get damaged. We can also utilize it in our spark timing calibration process. If we know exactly what to look for, I'll be outlining that in this video so it's gonna be very clear how the knock control works and then how you wanna go and work with it in order to tune your main spark timing table even without a chassis dyno. We're gonna have a lot to cover, so let's jump into this video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look at working with our knock control within our PC Link software. Our knock control is gonna allow us to utilize a knock sensor that's gonna be fitted to our engine. We can determine if the engine is knocking or not in all kinds of operating conditions. If the engine is knocking, we can program the link to take action, to actually reduce spark timing by a certain amount and add additional fuel if we configure and set up our knock control in that manner. So we can use this as a long-term fail-safe protection feature to avoid having the engine see knock conditions that will damage the engine. So if we have knock, it's gonna have an elevated cylinder pressure that we're gonna find, and by having an elevated cylinder pressure, we can damage the pistons, the rods, the connecting rod bearings, the crankshaft, the cylinder sleeves, the head gasket, even the cylinder head. All kinds of bad things are gonna happen if the engine is seeing knock and it's severe enough. So we wanna avoid that. Now we can also take a step further working with our knock control because we can see the signal from our knock sensor if we're seeing knock conditions and we're doing our calibration process, that's gonna be a dead indication that we probably have to go into our spark timing table and reduce spark timing at the range it was showing knock. So it's actually, it could be used to guide us in making our spark timing changes when we're tuning the spark timing table. I'll talk about that a little bit later in the video, but for right now, I wanna talk about what knock represents here real quick and how it relates to our spark timing table. And just so we can have a direct correlation between the spark timing and knock and things that potentially could create us uh, having our knock conditions. Let's go into our Spark page here. And we were in this in the last video, so this should all look familiar with this video. We know that our ignition table one here is our main spark timing table, and the values within the table here are commanding when we want our spark to occur when the piston is traveling upwards on our compression stroke. So if we're looking at a value here of 38 degrees, we're sending the signal to fire our coil, to fire our spark plug, to initiate our combustion, 38 degrees, before top dead center. So the values here are in BTDC or before top dead center. If we're working with a value that's something like seven degrees, this is much later, much later uh, commanded spark timing or retarded spark timing. This means that as the piston's traveling upwards, we're commanding that spark timing to happen or that combustion event to happen right before the engine sees top dead center. So uh, seven degrees here would be seven degrees before top dead center. A value of zero in the table would be top dead center and a negative value in here would be firing the spark plug after top dead center. Now our goal with tuning our spark timing table is to run the, the value as advanced as possible without having knock conditions. Now, as we're going and advancing our timing and trying to initiate the uh, cylinder pressure and the combustion process a little bit sooner, so it places the peak pressure onto the crankshaft around that 15 to 20 degree after top dead center mark. So that's gonna be where we always wanna shoot for to have our peak cylinder pressure. That's gonna give the most mechanical advantage to push down on the piston and rod, to spin the crankshaft, to produce the horsepower and torque out of our engine. As we're going in and trying to move the values up or down to figure out where our spark timing is going to be at, we will find that the engine will hit what's called maximum brake torque, or MBT. At a certain point, by going in and optimizing our timing, we'll find that that cylinder pressure will reach that sweet spot of 15 to 20 degrees after top dead center. So that's where that peak cylinder pressure can be placed. So we might find that with a spark timing value of something like 35 degrees. Now, if I start to advance my timing and start to initiate my spark sooner and going to 38 or 40 degrees, we're gonna find that that cylinder pressure is gonna to start to generate maybe a little bit sooner, but it's not going to help us make any more power. We're not finding that sweet spot of pushing right down on the piston and rod into the crankshaft 
at that 15 to 20 degree. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.